Good morning, dear friends. What a blessing to be with you. Here we are with another study, another chapter from the book Right Path by the Spirit Emmanuel through the blessed mediumship of Francisco Cândido Xavier. And today's chapter is the most call to serve for you and I. Manuel titled this chapter more always actually put a comma in between so more comma always so what more should you and i be doing this morning and every day of our lives emmanuel will tell us quote faced with the afflictive questions that overwhelm our individual experience let us analyze some of the recipes of peace that the Spiritist doctrine offer us in front of the evils we face in our daily lives. So what kind of recipes of peace Emmanuel will tell us in facing the difficulties in our lives? He used the word evils in the plural, but we know evil is just a lack of knowledge. Evil is just ignorance. When folks don't know, they don't know of God's laws. They're not working to dig that information out of their conscience. They just don't know better. We're never going to say anybody is destined to be evil. They're just in a state of ignorance of the good news of Christ and the laws of the universe. But they, in this message, Emmanuel is going to do a literally a recipe for a problem. He's going to list a problem and give us what we should be doing about it. And those are things, as the good spirits are always bringing to us, practical ways we can live in this life. And you're going to find yourself, experience some of it or a lot of these situations in our lives throughout our lifetime. So today, the problems of today may not be the problems you're going to have tomorrow, but it's still this is a message that is timeless. So let's go through the recipes of peace in light of the Dispiritist doctrine offering to us. He says, Ob obstacles to understanding our brothers and sisters. Sometimes we don't understand, folks. What do we do? He says, let us apply ourselves more and more to the charity of observing with greater depth and understanding the difficulties of others. Sometimes. We see something happening, we don't have all the information. We should silence and wait and observe what's going on. We only see the facets of the people's lives that they show to us. We never have a broad 360 view of their lives. Only God has that. As, as much as they don't know about our lives, and we would like to obtain from them greater depth and understanding when we are in difficulties. Next, domestic con conflicts. Conflict. Emmanuel will say, let us always practice the charity of fraternal contest for the worship of kindness in the home. We are blessed with the presence of a family in this lifetime, either that bloodly related to us or maybe we were adopted by a loving home or maybe we don't know who our parents are but we're cared by someone that's our family someone had to come together to give us this physical life that we enjoy but sometimes we have domestic conflicts because again sometimes we have trouble understanding our um, brothers and sisters and then what do we do we have the worship of kindness. How many homes would be even more peaceful with these recipes of peace if there were more kindness in their hearts? And it's much easier said than done, I know. When we aggravate it, it's hard to be kind. But then if we apply the teachings above, which is charity of observing, of greater depth and understanding, maybe we can understand better why our loved ones are acting the way they are and respect them of where they are in the world, right? Next, offensing and ingratitude. 
Let us always attend to charity of unconditional forgiveness, dispelling the fog of error with the blessing of grace. How many of us have offended and been ungrateful to others and how much we would love unconditional forgiveness, right? And sometimes maybe that's why we are together on this life because we offended and were ungrateful and hurt others. Therefore, we should attend to the charity of unconditional forgiveness. Next, injury and ill speaking. How many of us have hurt someone or ill speak of others? I'm going to invite us to go deeper, to a greater depth of understanding of where we stand and how we should be more than just pointing fingers, right? So if someone speaks ill of us or hurt us, what should we do? Emmanuel's words are, let us always exercise the charity of not commenting on evil. How many conflicts, small and large, would be avoided if we did not comment on the evil? If someone comes to you and say, oh, so-and-so said this about you, that's where the evil ends. You can say, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. That is unfortunate, but let's not comment. Maybe you misunderstood. This is not my experience with them. And then we don't pass it along. If someone's speaking you of others, come to you commenting or gossiping, then we need to stop and do the ch exercise the charity of not commenting on evil. Because we weren't there. Maybe it's their interpretation of what someone said. And then now we are committing evil. We are facing the evil, we're being the evil in other one, someone else's life. Next would be sourness and irritation in our friends' hearts. Sometimes our hearts are sour and irritated. So what do we do? Let us always exert the charity of returning to an affectionate conversation without altering our voice. However bad the less pleasant occurrence may have been. So when we feel our heart sour and irritated, let's do the same. Let's return to the affectionate conversation. If someone comes to you with sourness and irritation, diverge that talk. Bring the talk back to something that is good. The goodness on the universe is much greater than the evil. We just don't realize it because we're, we're semi-trapped in the physical body that only allows to perceive certain things. Therefore, let's us imagine the goodness and let's visualize the goodness. Let's mold the goodness. Let's think of goodness in everyone because the good is greater than the evil in the world. Next is slander and accusation. So what do we, do we do in facing slander and accusation? I mean, it was a lot of show more and more cheery of being more and more useful, whatever we are. People are slandering you, your works and spirit, and they're accusing you of not doing enough. Not a problem. Show the charity of being more useful. Continue doing the work. Don't feel discouraged. Are you reading a message, translating, sharing on your WhatsApp? Are you doing a program on it? Or are you helping your spiritist group do charitable works around the country? Great, don't listen to those who slander. If your conscience is clear that you're doing the best you can with the resources that you have, you're applying well your talents. So we serve more. That's how we do it. Obsessive inf influence. Let us always ex exemplify the charity by resisting to temptations for working in the refuge of prayer. Sometimes we, we know of spiritism and we get to know of spirit mentors and spirit obsessors, and we start blaming everything on spirits around us. Sometimes they don't have to work that hard because we're doing all the work of evil for them. But if we find ourselves truly under obsessive influence, we need to take refuge in prayer. Prayer fulfills a love worship. When we pray, we connect to God. God can allow us to tap into divine providence's resources. God will send someone to help us. And that's when we work through prayer. When our obsessors 
Let's just spirit friends join us. It could be that we hurt them in a previous life. Or maybe we are being obsessors of others when we slander, when we accuse, when we ill speak, when we are ungrateful. We have to think about what did I do to have that influence around me? If I commit to the works of the good, if I find a way that I am always trying, the good spirits will support us. And then the refuge of a prayer for that spirit that is around us can also be a great way to serve. Setbacks and pro protests. Emmanuel will tell us, let us extend ever more the charity of present patience, or excuse me, and the faithful performance of the obligations entrusted to us by the goodness of God by offering to the world and to our fellow beings that which we are best able to produce. If someone is putting setbacks and trying to hinder your progress, and many are saying, cherry of patience, faithful performance of the obligation entrusted to us by the goodness of God. You have been entrusted by God with something to do in this universe that is unique to you. In this lifetime, we may be unable to see the greater scheme of things, but you can do something good in your life today. You have certain abilities, you have intelligence, you're placed in a specific place in the universe to serve whatever you are. So we stop the fear of missing out. We stop looking at what others are doing and criticizing. We look, where am I? What am I capable of doing? What does God want me to do today? Charity of patience waiting for the right opportunities, faithful performance of the obligations entrusted to us. Boredom and discouragement. Who does not feel bored and discouraged? And this is the recipe of peace that spiritism brings to us when we are facing boredom and discouragement. Let's always do more charity of visiting while assisting as much as possible. Brothers and sisters who lack penury like physical lack who do still do not yet possess even a small fraction of the advantages and opportunities that life grant us do we feel bored and discouraged how many times we see our children bored and discouraged yet they have everything to take them somewhere where folks have less because we when we go there we can only model the ability of volunteering and giving off of your weekend hour, one hour on the weekend to serve someone, you've been an example. Then you can show in perspective how much less folks have and then how we can help them. When we visit people, we should also be assistant. And now you can go back to no ill speaking, no slander, no talking bad about people in allowing the evil to die within you. You don't propagate it. Emmanuel will finish this chapter by telling us, in truth, the path of evolution is a road to the top, is upwards road. In the midst of dangers, obstacles, sufferings, and thorns that appear to us as painful and difficult problems, that appear to us, appear to you and I, we see those things as painful. However, what could they be? What could the obstacles, sufferings, and thorns and dangers be? Opportunities of learning. All of these things that Emmanuel listed, obstacles, obstacles to understanding others, domestic conflicts, of offenses and ingratitude, ill speaking, sourness and irritation in our hearts, slander and accusation, obsessive influence, setbacks and pro protests, boredom and discouragement. They are all opportunities. They're difficult for us because of the level of evolution we find ourselves. Yet, Emmanuel is telling us the path of our evolution is an upwards road. It's like going up a hill. Slowly but surely you can get there. He says, before we search for any remedy, let us always experience the effort of charity and we will be in the exact path of the solution. So in this chapter alone, he used the word charity many times. One charity, two charity, three charity, four charity, five charity, six charity, seven charity, eight charity, nine charity, ten charity. Ten things 
there may be evils and difficulties in our daily lives. For every single one of those 10 obstacles, I'll call them obstacles, there were 10 recipes of peace, and each and every one of the remedies had the charity word in it. Therefore, today, with this chapter that's titled More Always, you and I are invited to serve. Charity of material resources, giving what we don't need to others. Providing them with financial resources so they can provide for their means. Spreading the good news of Christ, spiritual, emotional charity of reaching out to others. Charity in the form of prayer. Charity in the form of patience. Charity in the form of silence. Go out there, dear friends. Use the resources that God has granted you so that you can serve more. More always. Thank you so very much for joining me. And I hope that between now and the next time we meet, God can provide you with many, many more opportunities of service. And until then, stay well, stay safe, take care of yourself and others. I hope to see you soon.